Guys, on today's episode, we talked about measurements on the body. Big, hairy, audacious goals. We talked about how to lose, no, how to build abs. Yes, how to get abs when you've lost all your body yeah. weight. And so much more. <laughs> Just keep watching the show, enjoy. <music> Welcome back, everybody, to a brand new episode of... Hashtag Ask Liveling TV. Thank you guys for tuning in for another show. This is episode... 32? 32? 32. 32. Holy shit. Nikes. I know. And uh, I don't know if you guys noticed, but if you want to scroll in, you can you see my eye right there. No, how, you can't because you're already healed. How fast was that recover? If you guys saw on my uh, Instagram, I posted a photo on Instagram, what was it, four days ago? Four, it's been four days. I like had a big accident. I got a big black eye. Shared it on the Summer vlog. Somersaulting accident. Well, I shared it on the vlog. You can watch it. Like it was caught on camera, like everything in our life. Yeah. And I was like bulging. And within <laughs> four days, my eye completely repaired itself. So I was saying on my Snapchat that if you think living lean is just for like weight loss and to build muscle, hell no. It's to friggin' rejuvenate your skin cells and everything. Like the recovery on this bad boy right here is on point. Working out and eating healthy makes you like superhuman, yo. It does, man. Yeah. So it's just to throw it out there, guys. Not only is it to, to get you lean, it's also to keep you young, looking young, rejuvenated. As if you needed another reason why. Yeah. There so, you go. So listen to the answers of this show and you can get your eye repaired like me. And someone just, <laughs> someone just Snapchatted me actually and they said, they showed me a big bruise on their arm. And they said, so if I do the things that you said, will this bruise go away fast? And you said, you betcha, I right? Said, you betcha. Yeah, you know it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump into the show. First question on Snapchat from Kat. Kat asks, if I've been in a steady caloric deficit for about eight months now and lost around 20 pounds, but I've plateaued for a few months now, is my caloric deficit and workout routine my new quote unquote normal if I want to maintain this physique? Is there any leeway now? Oh yeah. Okay. So yes, your body does adapt. When you give it a new quote unquote normal, your body's going to get used to that and then not change anymore. So like we always say, you need to structure your fitness and nutrition in phases. So you don't just choose one workout program and one you know, nutrition, like macro calorie level for life. Well, you could you, the macro, the nutrition side. If you find, like, when you're at your ideal body weight, In your then maintenance yes, mode. Yes, exactly. In but maintenance mode. not the case with your workout. Keep going. Right. Okay. So you want to always base what you're doing on your goals, what you're trying to get to. So it sounds like you did that. You had a goal of weight loss and you, you know, acted accordingly. You had a deficit in your diet and it worked. You got to where you wanted to be, but now you kind of have to do something different. And the answer is not always to keep going down, 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 yeah. down, because you eventually get to where your calories are too low yeah. that you're not able to have any energy. Your workouts start to suffer. Your everything starts to suffer. So you, you may have to put yourself back in a surplus for a short period of time and, you know, kind of recalibrate your metabolism. Yeah. And That's why when we, we put people on quote unquote weight loss programs, <laughs> love all the air quotes. Right now. <laughs> yeah. We, you don't just drop your calories like to the Severely. bone. Yeah. You got to slowly work your way down, like adapt your body slowly with that. So you actually have somewhere to go once you hit these plateaus. Right. So like you said, um, yeah, adapt your workout programs. If you keep doing the same thing over again, your body's smart, it's gonna adapt, it's not gonna yeah. change. So change up your workout program, whatever you're doing. So switch up the reps, switch up the exercises, switch up the grip placements, the, the weight, everything, switch it up. Or just a few things, switch it up and uh, keep, keep it going. So congrats on the 20 pounds, but it's now time to dial it in a little bit more. So if you're not counting your calories and you wanna know if you actually are in a calorie deficit to even keep you going further, start tracking your calories. Things that gets tracked get managed. Yeah, but also, you know, don't be afraid of a calorie surplus. Like having a little bit of a surplus doesn't always mean fat gain. Like a surplus is used for muscle gain as well. Yeah. So if you put yourself on a muscle building program for a short term with your calorie surplus, you're going to be funneling that food into the right places. Into you know gains. what I mean? Yeah. So we don't want you regressing with your fat loss, but you should be progressing with your muscle gains, which is going to help you get leaner. So don't be afraid of a surplus. You can do it and you're not going to go, you're not gonna slip backwards. You'll, you're gonna keep moving forwards. Okay, so we have Jonas Bohm says, grains question. Uh-oh, 
Would you consider whole grain spelt flour live lean approved to make homemade pizza or pasta? Spelt? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not live lean approved? If it's your cheat meal, yes, and you're having one time a week, fine, have whole wheat, like do whatever you want to do. Well, spelt is not wheat, but... What is it then? You know, it's a grain, but it's not necessarily wheat. No, I don't I'm know saying, if it's gluten-free or not. I'm saying but, it's a grain. And like, right. Uh, like, you don't consider any grains really to be live lean Not like an everyday really. thing. Yeah. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, when you're saying is it live lean approved, what I'm referring to when I say live lean approved is foods that you can eat every single day. But you know what else is live lean approved? Cheat day. One time a week. Yeah, exactly. So if you wanted to do homemade pizza or pasta with whole grain spelt flour, have at it yeah. once a week. But if you make it with this spelt powder or flour <laughs> and the crust doesn't taste good and you don't feel like you're satisfied after this cheat meal, quote unquote, cheat meal. <laughs> Stop with the air quotes, <laughs> yo. Um, then use regular like flour for your cheat meal. That's yeah, what, like, yeah, yeah. So this is what I'm saying. So like, a it, cheat meal needs to be a cheat, you guys. Like yes. it can't. Like if you make, if you try to make your cheat meal healthy, then you're gonna end up feeling like you still ha like left something on the table. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if it you feel not healthy. If you guys want a live lean approved pizza crust that you can have like oh, all yeah. the time, we've been showing it on our vlogs. We get a pizza crust. We'll put it. We'll link it up below. It's so good. We buy it from um, Thrive. Paleo. It's Julian Baker. Right? I, from Thrive. Yeah. The link's down below. If you guys are not a member there, you can get a free membership at Thrive, 25 to 50% off foods delivered right to your door. So and awesome. this pizza crust is legit. It's made of almond flour. It is so good. We made it twice now. Yeah. And it's Both like- Both times were like amazing. Yeah, I could be like, I could eat this all the time. Yeah. And it like the ingredients on it are almond flour and a couple other things, so simple. And we don't consider that a cheat meal because last time we made it, we didn't even put cheese on it. So yeah. it's basically chicken, vegetable sauce, and this like almond flour yeah. basically crust, which is, yeah, it's a great way of having pizza yeah. without cheating. But and then the, you can like later have a dirty pizza. But then guys, I'll throw this out there again. Where are you on the continuum? Like we talked about this last episode. This guy looks pretty ripped in his picture. <laughs> so Jonas, if you are like eating Domino's pizzas every day, <laughs> by yes, by going to a spelt flour pizza, you're improving. You're progressing towards the journey to live lean. Right. But if you want to, if you're want to know the real answer like by eating that every day like i don't consider that a live lean approved food but it depends on where you're starting at so right. if you're if you're here or if you're down here and here and you want to be here <laughs> and it's a better way to go and on the podcast if you can't see that you'll have to right go now. watch the youtube video okay next question on youtube from mike wolf mike says can you suggest supplements for joint health or what do you do to help protect joints due to wear and tear from weightlifting Okay, supplements for joint health. I know fish oil can be beneficial. Yes. You can also take, what is it called, cellulose or? Cellulose, never heard of it. What is that, or what am I thinking of? Ooh, there's a certain Glucosamine? Supplement. Glucosamine, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, that is good for joints. Um, and what else did he ask? What, what can you do to prevent? Yeah joint pain, take it easy on your joints. Like if you're doing a lot of plyometrics and you're like landing really hard, I hate, it makes me cringe when I see people do box jumps and they're like slamming into it. Yeah. I'm not saying I've never done that. I'm sure I've been guilty of that too, but you want to always land softly like a ninja. Like, yes, I, like I would that. always tell my clients, like, I don't want to hear your, your landing. It should be like yeah. silence. So definitely do that on all of your plyometric exercises. And then when it comes to your heavy weightlifting moves, um, Try not to overdo it. I mean, yeah, we want you to get stronger, but there, it comes to a point when you're strong enough and you got to give your joints a break yeah. and, and make sure that you're having enough recovery days in your week. Like we always say, at least one day off from lifting per week. And it's, it's crucial for your joint health. Make sure you get a warm up in. Yeah. Okay, so a, a lot of people point, just yeah. load up too fast, too quickly. Yeah. And they're not, the mind to muscle connection's not there. Their body's not warm. The synovial fluids are not going through your joints. And like, just think about it, like your joints, like when there's no fluid in there, it's just like grinding each other. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get, you know, drink a lot of water, uh, warm up, get the synovial fluids going, but make sure when you're lifting weights, you're focusing on actually contracting the muscle as opposed to just moving the just weight. Just doing reps, like, yeah. It shouldn't be called weightlifting. It should be called like, muscle contraction muscle moving. Yeah, <laughs> like, so like sure, you could bench press 400 pounds, 
but is it is the all the load from that 400 pounds is it going to your chest and your triceps or is it going right here to your elbow joints just think about that and feel that when you're doing the work yeah. now i can speak from experience that i've had elbow tendonitis and I've worked through it. I've, I spent a lot of money on physio. I spent money on chiropractic. I've done all kinds of different things to fix mm -hmm. it. And one thing that I found other than just taking time away. And when I say that, um, I'm referring to like pull-ups. Pull-ups was yeah. like something that would really hurt my elbows or doing biceps. So I stopped doing them. I was still doing my squats. I was still doing other things, but just try to stay away yeah, from you're still hitting the gym daily. any kind of like elbow flexion movements. Right. Um, so that, that helped, time away, but there's actually something called voodoo flossing. Now, mm -hmm. um, I was doing this today. Um, it's a rubber band. I think I've showed you guys on my Snapchat or something. So if you're not following me on Snapchat, you're seeing things that I'm doing every day in the gym. Um, but it's like a rubber band and you can wrap it around your joints. It's a thick rubber band. It, yeah. Well, it's a thin rubber band, but it's thick banded. Right. But it's just a thin rubber thing that goes like right. this. Right, yeah, it's thin, but it's wide. And you just yeah. wrap it around, like your, for, for your elbow, you wrap it below the elbow joint, above the elbow joint, and then you just move your elbow in all different ranges of motion. And what that does is it, um, once you take, like it restricts the blood flow, so then once you take it off, all that new blood is just like flowing through there and it's, and it's getting all the, the bad pieces out of your elbow joint. And it actually really works well. It worked well for me. So I would highly recommend you pick up some Voodoo uh, Floss. Just Google that, you'll find it. I think it's it. so weird that it's called Flossing. Yeah. But... Um, but I learned that from the, the Supple Leopard book that I read, which oh, is a yeah. great book. Kelly Starr it's all about mobility. Perfect on mobility yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, man, that's a lot there, but definitely. So yeah, we answered all the questions, supplements you can take, exercises you can do, things to avoid. Yeah. And yeah, you should keep your joints healthy with all those tips. Yeah, but that's a good question. I like answering these style questions because like as I get up there in age, like, you know, I'm looking for health and maintenance with my body, not necessarily like Things fat. that 20 and under people don't have to yeah, think about. Yeah, you don't have to worry about. Like, it's all about longevity for me, so I love those questions. Keep them yeah, coming Yeah, but in. seriously, anybody at any age should be protecting and taking care of their joints because yeah, but it does. Yeah, but let's be real. Good. I wasn't doing it when I was 20. <laughs> I know. And anyone who's like 15 right now watching this is like, yeah. whatever, skip that part. Okay, bronze. I want to get jacked. <laughs> get, the, get the chicks. Bronzed on the Glow says, I wanted to find out what you guys think about low-fat chocolate milk after a workout instead of whey protein. Ah, bronzed on the glow, jelly of your skin yeah, color. That's a gorgeous picture yeah. right there, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I, what was it, chocolate milk? Yes. Oh, so you're falling for the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call you out right now. Like, I've seen those commercials too. Yeah. Wait, cho I'm chocolate surprised. milk provides the right source of protein in the healthy yeah. sugar, the sugars <laughs> after a tough, intense workout. Yeah, I have to say, I'm like really surprised that we're getting this question because I would think if you've been following us for a while, this could be your first, you know, time watching us, but we don't promote dairy, you know, nutritionally. It's not in any of our programs. We don't personally drink dairy milk. We have whey protein, but that's the only really that's an isolate, other than like... That's you know, the lactose is taken out. Yeah, like it's a exactly. very process point. We use almond milk or coconut milk yeah. instead of milk when we like eat it or put it in recipes. Um, so yeah, low fat chocolate milk, definitely no go for us. So my question would be, why would you take that rather than whey? Like maybe like, is there something about whey? Is it because you don't have access to whey? Is it uh, because chocolate milk is sitting right there in the fridge at the gym and you can just <laughs> grab it and go? Um, I don't know what it may be, but no, I or would maybe go. Maybe read in a magazine that it was yeah. the best recovery. No, you saw it on the TV, like yeah. the TV commercials. I know, but it's also in like every oh, fitness know it magazine. Is. And it's yeah. at fitness trade shows and <laughs> everything else. That. So, uh, no, stick to the whey protein, or if you can't, if the whey protein doesn't uh, work with your body, go with uh, a plant based protein, go with an egg protein. Um, I'm actually working with a new company now with a paleo based protein as well, um, which we'll link up down below. So, if you guys have never, um, felt good on a whey protein. The, the plant-based proteins just taste disgusting and the texture is brutal. Yeah. And you want a protein that mixes well, it tastes decent, and it actually doesn't give you like the bloat that you may get from whey. Um, I'll link up this guy down below. It's from a company called Roots. Um, yeah. it's, it's really good guys. So you want to check that one out. It's a paleo approved yeah. protein powder. I'm not sure what the macros would be on low fat chocolate milk versus whey protein, but I'm pretty sure you're not getting anywhere near as much protein as you would per serving. It's probably, right? I would say if I had to estimate, like it's probably like 11 grams 
to 14 grams. For and then, a serving. And then a protein shake, it's like 20 to 25. Right. So you'd probably have to have twice as much yeah. chocolate milk as you would a whey protein shake. What I would recommend you do it's is... It's a lot of sugar. The sugar take, really adds up. You know, take your protein powder, mix it in water, throw a banana in there, throw a little bit of maple syrup or honey in there for some of the, the uh, glucose, blend it up. It's delicious. Boom, or yeah, you done. can follow any Put of our recipes. Put some blueberries in there. Yeah, we have a bunch of great protein shake recipes in Team Loveline, so you could check in there too to see kind of like what we have post workout. <clears throat> okay, next question on Twitter from Mike McCollum says, "Brad, how did you start working with my protein? They approach you or you them?" So, uh, Mike, that, when did I start working with my protein? That was. I feel like it's been a year now. No, it's been more or, than no, a year. Uh, two years. Yeah, I'd say, because yeah. I remember when I when I moved to when LA. I first moved to LA. Yeah. So they contacted me, and um, I looked into the company. And a lot of people don't realize this because my protein is not as big in the U.S. as it is globally. Yeah. Um, they sent me their their their, their deck like showing me all of their, what their business is about and everything. And they are, I think, the third or fourth largest supplement company in the world. So it's- Yeah, uh, they're up there. They're right up there. With, but I feel like Americans don't even know about well, that, they just, which is amazing. That's yeah. why they contacted me was because they wanted me to help get their brand out here. Yeah. So um, the way I'll put this to you guys is that I am a my protein athlete, like a brand ambassador for them. However, I, I'm not- what, what, how should I put this? I'm not an advocate of every single product that they make. Right. I'll be 100% up front. Like they have so many products, so many good products, and there's products that I don't touch and I won't promote um, because of the ingredients in them. It goes against what I talk about. Yeah. So um, when I did look into them, the thing I loved about my protein was they had a lot of quality supplements, like a lot, a big product range. They were affordable and they were single ingredient um, supplements. Right, right. So you could get like your, like I don't, I don't think you can find that with other supplement companies. Like you can get vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin E, you can get yeah. fish oils, you can get iron, you can get zinc, you can get magnesium, you can get all these different um, single, minerals like, yeah, and vitamins. Yeah. And plus they have like their protein cookies, which I don't, yeah, Dabble and they have in. tons of flavors of protein, like a freaking the longest yeah. list I've ever seen, like banana chocolate nut, yeah. and like all kinds of crazy flavors. But I, yeah, we really like the fact that they stick to just like basics, yeah. you know, with certain products. So we, the, the ones that we order from them are just like bare bones, kind of like basic stuff. Yeah, and when I did agree to work with them, I also agreed to make sure that I'm not exclusive to them. So that means that I don't have to just promote their products because that's important to me. That whenever I put my name behind something, I wanna make sure that I'm taking it myself and that I'm actually you know, truly believe in it. And yeah. there were some products there that I didn't like, so I don't promote them. But I, there's other products out there from other companies that are comparable that I like and that I want to promote. So I'm, you know what I mean? So right, right, it's right. like they have a pre-workout powder, or sorry, the company I just spoke about before this, Roots, has a pre-workout powder, the Paleo Company, that I showed you guys in last week's vlog. It's entirely all natural. I've never seen a pre-workout drink with caffeine and everything in it that's so clean. It's all natural herbs in it. And my protein doesn't have that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just one of those things. So anytime I do promote something, I wanna make sure that it fits within the Live Lean brand guidelines. So that's kind of a long story, but just to give you a little background on the, uh, how I choose companies that I want to work with. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah Smile 1984 says, thanks for these mm -hmm. Q&A videos. You're welcome. They are truly so helpful. Let's, take, let's talk goals. Should I set smaller short-term goals up until I reach my big goal? In other words, break down a big mm -hmm. goal into smaller sections. Or should I just set that big Mac Daddy goal from the get-go? Sometimes I feel like the big goal can seem more intimidating. Ha, so Sarah, smile, 1984 on <laughs> Snapchat. It sounds like you have not read my book, <laughs> Think and Live Lean, because I, it's very clear my stance on that question in there. And what is the answer? Are we just going to leave it at that and make everyone read no, the book? No, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fill you in. Um, the answer is chunk it down. Absolutely, because you're right about the intimidation factor. Like yeah. so many people will just not even start towards a goal that just seems unreachable, like it's never going to happen. Yeah. And just like stay in that comfort zone. Like how many times have you heard someone just say, oh, this is just the way I am. I just have to deal with it. Yeah. No, like transformation is possible, but it doesn't happen 
overnight. You don't wake up the next day being crazy fit. You have to take small steps and keep working towards it in little increments. Yep. And I do think it's really important to celebrate your successes along the way. So even losing one pound of fat is a big deal. So that should be celebrated. Obviously not like with food, you know? <laughs> with a huge cheat meal that puts <laughs> yeah. on two pounds. Exactly. <laughs> you want to learn to celebrate your successes like in an emotional way, something like do something or go somewhere that makes you feel good, you know? Um, but yeah, definitely chunk it down because yeah. So it's just, yeah, it's so much more likely that you're actually gonna take actions when the goals are more reachable. So one of the reasons I love this Q&A show is that you guys ask us questions and I get to story tell. So I get to tell you guys stories by answering your questions. So I'll tell you a little story about how this worked for me. Like when I first started this YouTube channel, my goal was to get to 10,000 subscribers. So it was 10,000 yeah. and I started at one subscriber and I was like, holy. I think I met you when you had 8,000, right? What I, yeah, yeah, because. Yeah. We celebrated 10 together. So like to think like, I hustled so hard just to get 100 subscribers. Yeah. I was thinking to get to 10,000 subscribers, I got a hundred X this to yeah. get there. And you thought that was like a lot. And I thought like yeah. once you hit 10,000, you've made it. <laughs> yeah. Like you are, you're, <laughs> you're famous. You're gold. Um, so if I would have just, you know, looked at that 10,000 as opposed to chunking it down to, you know, 50 by 100 by 200 by 300, I would have given up because it was so long for me to get to that 10,000. Mm -hmm. And then when I got to the 10,000, it was 50,000. And that happened a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. And then it was 100,000 and that happened a lot quicker. And then like my big hairy audacious goal has been transforming the lives of one, what, one million people. And so to get there, it's like, okay, we're at like 200 and some thousand on this channel alone. Yeah. So it's like, okay, next one is 250. And so yeah, long story short, chunk that bad boy down. Don't allow these big goals that look so far out of the way because it's just not gonna motivate you. It's, yeah. You gotta chunk those babies down. And I think, what do you think would have happened if on day one you thought, I need a million subscribers on this channel or else it's not worth I, doing? I you would've like, stopped making videos. And I would've be like, yeah. to get there, I gotta do this, 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 this. So many Too different much. things. Yeah. It's like you're chasing so many different rabbits at one time. It's like, no, focus just on that next video or Absolutely. focus on just that next pound, like whatever it may be, right, one right. pound at a time, one meal at a time, one right. more out totally. at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And just stopping every once in a while to realize how far you've come. I think that's really important because it sometimes you feel like stuck and like you're not progressing at all. Yeah. Like if your goal is to lose 20 pounds and you lose five, but then you're at five for a long time, it's like you lost five pounds. It's a big deal. It's a good thing. It means you should continue to keep going instead of get discouraged and go backwards. Yeah. You know, so many people do that. They keep yo-yoing, going forwards and backwards and forwards and backwards. Yeah. But if you go forwards, it's like the turtle in the hair thing. Like the turtle eventually wins the race. Slow and steady is the way to go. So yes, whatever that goal is, try to segment it and just go after one piece at a time. And go pick up that book. Yeah, <laughs> now that we already spoiled it for you. Thinkandlivelean.com, people. But seriously, do the exercises in the book. Everyone needs to do that. Okay, next question from Miriam B on Twitter says, I work out at 5 a.m. for one hour, two days on, one off. Just started intermittent fasting. Can I go until 11 or 12 without eating? Ooh. Um, you know what I would do if I were you, I would probably move the intermittent window, yeah. you know, the window of eating sooner, especially on those workout days. You could kind of flip flop it back and forth, but I think it's better if you just keep your window steady. So even on the days that you don't work out, you still eat the same window, but yeah, from 5 AM till she's saying 11, 11 or 12. Yeah. Mm, you're going to be really hungry yeah. after that workout. I would say move your eating the, closer because you have to also go to bed really early when you wake up at Yeah, five. like the thing, yeah. the thing is like people have this perception of intermittent fasting that it has to be from this window to this window, but you can shift that time to fit your lifestyle. That's yeah. the great thing about it. Mm -hmm. And um, so you could do it, but you would have to, you know, take some BCAs to make sure that your muscles are staying in that anabolic stage, not breaking down after your workout. But that may be difficult for people to go from that, you know, five to six all the way up to 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's I, a long time, yeah. if I was doing that, I would shift my fast from, Sooner, like, I would break yeah. my fast post-workout and then I would just stop eating later and earlier in the day. But um, I think there is a protocol that you can follow from, um, 
the, the Martin Burkham, I think his name is. Yeah. He's like one of the godfathers of intermittent fasting. <laughs> if you search, I think he, Godfather. I think he has a protocol based on if you work out first thing in the morning, like a supplement protocol on how you can uh, gotcha. do that. So you may want to go check that out. I'm not sure, hundred percent sure on it though. Yeah. And you know what? You literally can do anything that works for you. So if you experiment with different ways and you find that that works for you, if you're <laughs> totally fine with finishing your workout at six and not eating till noon, then I don't see why not, you know, whatever works for you. Madison Porcelli says, what would you guys suggest to do when one's goal is to seek, to see their six pack, but while doing a cut got pretty lean and now only weighs 102 pounds in the morning and five, three, what is the safest way of going about it? <laughs> What's the question? Can you just paraphrase it for me? Yeah. So basically she wants to see her six pack, but she did a cut and got really lean, like down to 102. She's five foot three. So what's the safest way of going about getting that six pack? So are, are, is she saying that she cut, but the cut didn't give her the abs? Yeah, I guess not. Yeah. I think she cut too severely and got too skinny and like not muscular enough is that's what I'm getting from this is instead of building muscle, you just lost weight, which yeah, was yeah, muscle and Yeah, I fat. guess that's the point there. Yeah. So sometimes when you guys give us these questions, it's not really clear. That's just, I know that's my so, interpretation. <laughs> yeah. I hope I'm reading it right. But um, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about because this is kind of what happened to me when I first started training. I didn't really understand like building muscle or like how that was done or even that it was important, you know, to me being fit was a certain number on the scale. I was like, Oh, yeah. when I'm this many pounds, I'll be fit. You know, it was 117 or no 119, I think was the goal I was going for. And I was really, I'm five, six, mm. just to give you a little, um, you know, framing there. So that's, that weight is too low for me. Someone, my height should be at least 130. So I, was very successful and I got down to 117, which was like even lower than my goal weight. But when I got there, I started seeing my rib cage, my face looked really <laughs> gaunt. I was like too skinny, you know, like just kind of like a skeleton figure. So um, then it kind of like, I figured it out and I was like, oh, maybe I need to actually build some muscle and yeah. like not starve myself every day. Yeah. So I mm. would say if your goal, and you know, then here's the next mistake I made is I put on too much weight too fast. I did like a bulk and it was just- Dirty bulk. Yeah, dirty bulk. <laughs> and it was just Keep ridiculous. Picture. I just can't picture you doing a dirty bulk. <laughs> yeah, it was not good. <laughs> but anyway, that's what I don't mm. suggest for you. What I do suggest is slightly increase your calories, slightly increase your, you know, muscle building, lifting workouts. Um, don't go from zero to 60 in one day. You got to sort of work yourself up into it. So right now you didn't really say what your workout routine is, but if you're not lifting weights, I would start to incorporate weightlifting for you. Um, especially if your goal is to see your six pack, you need to be doing not only just ab exercises, but weighted ab exercises. That's, what's going to really make your muscles pop. Um, and also training your major mm -hmm. muscle groups. Abs are about the contraction. You must contract must the abs. Collapse. You must breathe out. You must suck in. You must contract. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and the other thing that people, I think, they never train their abs overlook. Right. Yeah, they they never train their abs right. And then also, you got to get used to flexing in the mirror. I know that sounds really stupid, but like you got to learn how to actually make that mind to muscle yeah. connection between your mind and your abs, like actually teaching yourself to flex on command. That's yeah, important. What I used to do, like when I was working in a corporate job and I was driving to work in the morning in traffic, <laughs> it'd be like between stoplights, you can <laughs> So yeah. when you're like at a red, I just on the New York subway. Yeah. When you're at a stoplight, flex your abs. Yeah. When it goes green, you let loose and then you go. Yeah. And <laughs> don't, you know, confuse that. You don't have to make this face <clears throat> when you're doing it. Like you shouldn't look like, you're taking a dump you need to just like keep a calm face and flex your abs you should be able to smile and talk i'm doing it right now you just can't tell are you doing it yeah you doing it, you're doing it. <laughs> so hopefully that helps answer your question i hope that we understood it correctly if not let us know in the comment section below and we'll try to clarify the answer but yeah those are my recommendations next question on twitter from maria peraza i love your videos i want to ask you when i cook something how do i measure the calories carbs etc all right cool so 
measuring stuff. This I feel mm. like we're getting a lot of questions about this lately because we've been really harping on how important portion control is. And it really is, whether your goal is muscle building or weight loss, if you don't even have a rough idea of how many calories you're taking in, it's gonna be really hard for you to have success with your journey. So in order to really get the best results, your food needs to be on point. So measuring your food, you use a food scale. And we've shown this in a couple of our videos, um, but you can, be as accurate as down to the gram when you're measuring with a food scale. If you don't have one, you can also use measuring cups, but that's gonna be a little less accurate. And then as far as knowing how much of which foods to put in your meal that you're cooking, that comes down to having a meal plan or following a meal plan like the ones we provide in Team Move Lean or a custom meal plan like you can apply for with this link right here. But each meal amount is gonna be a breakdown of your total daily goals. So you first decide how many calories you need, mm -hmm. what you want your macro split to look like, and then you chunk it down into however many meals you're gonna eat for the day. And so that kind of in a nutshell is how you figure mm -hmm. out how much each meal needs to contain. Yeah, so we, we, have, we also have a meal planning software. Mm -hmm. So when you have a food scale, you have a sweet potato, you put the sweet potato on the food scale, it'll tell you 300 grams. You go to this meal planning software, you set, you ch check from a drop down box, you select sweet potato, you put in 300 grams, it'll spit out automatically how much calories, how many proteins, yeah. how many fats, how many carbs that is. So that meal plan, we'll link that up down below. It's only 15 bucks. A lot mm -hmm. of people have been using it. That's yeah. what I use when I first got into it. That's, That's what I use all <laughs> the time when I'm making clients' yeah. meal plans as well. The, it's similar. I mean, no, it's not similar. I want to say a lot of people ask if it's like my fitness pal, but it's a little bit different because you're using it proactively to plan your meals in advance. Whereas I feel like my fitness pal people use it kind of throughout the day as they go, like scanning barcodes and stuff of whatever they just ate and then figuring out what the macros are. The, our meal planner software is a tool that you use before you decide what you want to eat. That way you can then follow your eating based on that, that blueprint, if that makes sense. So in my opinion, that's a way better way to go about your eating than just kind of like after the fact, trying to figure out, did I hit my macros today? Like you'll know if you hit your macros because they're already decided and then that's how you decide what to cook in the kitchen. And also I think a big thing is, you know, doing leftovers. Like, like he said, if you weigh out a sweet potato, you have 300 grams of sweet potato, that's just how it came from the store, but you only need 150 grams for the, for your meal, then you can know to put half of it away. But I feel like a lot of people just eat the whole sweet potato <laughs> because they don't know that they, that there is another option, yeah. you know? And sometimes it's okay to use half a banana or put the other half in the fridge, you know? So it is really important to, you know, know how much you need and know how much you're actually taking in. And this can be a, just a world of difference for you if you're trying to transform. All right, Dex to real. Mm. Curious question, have you ever measured your arms? <laughs> I'm sure he's talking to you. Have you ever measured your arms? I actually have though. <laughs> Let's see the guns there. <laughs> Mom guns. Um, how about you? Last, Dad I can't, guns. I, I can't remember last time I measured my arms. I think, what was it? Mine were like 11. <laughs> yeah, mine, mine are like 15 and a half, 16 inches, yeah. which I'm totally okay with. Um, I find like, to me, from a physique standpoint, it should be all about symmetry. Symmetry, yeah. So yeah. I like the size of your arms. I feel like some dudes have like, yeah, like way it, too big. They don't. They look like they don't go with the rest of your well, body. You it's know? the guys who just they train arms all day and they yeah. never train their calves or their legs. Right, that's the worst. Like the, the, <laughs> Top the proper heavy. symmetry yeah. is like you know it's the cobra. You got your wide shoulders. You your your back. waist comes down this way and then you go out this way. But your calves should match the size of your arms. Yeah, so like 15 inches, so 15 it's like inches. 15, is, I think 15. that's ideal for guys. So right? um, biceps for most guys just tend to be easier to grow than calves. So you see guys walking around with big arms and then they got little twigs for legs and it just looks ridiculous. Like, so, you know, like if you're gonna focus on growing any body part, like I would say focus on, for most guys anyway, focus on growing your, your legs. Yeah, definitely. But, um, you know, on the topic of measuring body parts, I used to <laughs> measure, yeah, I used like when I first Which started. Which body fitness, part are you referring oh, to? Oh, <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> Let's not make this show dirty again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I used to measure like um, 
Obviously, you don't need to measure every part of your body. Like it's pointless to be measuring like your pinky finger. But the ones you want to focus on for fitness are like your waist measurement. For girls, hip measurement, thigh measurements. I think for guys, it's generally just waist, chest, maybe shoulders. Shoulders, yeah. Um, quads and, and and quads and calves. Well, thighs and, yeah. and calves. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes neck is another one I would do for the guys. And as a personal trainer, I used to do this for every single client yeah. and do it like once a month or once every three months. Yeah. Um, so it can be a helpful way of telling how your body's changing. Exactly. But the one thing that I've really like stuck to through the years, like keep in mind, I've been doing personal training for over a decade now. <laughs> it makes me feel really old, but um, I think progress pictures have always been the one thing that is like the easiest way to tell when you've had change and also to know if your change is going in a direction that you like or not. Because I can't tell you, like just by looking at someone's measurement numbers on a piece of paper, I can't tell you if they look better or happier or leaner, you know? Like just when your measurements change, I feel like it's not a good enough indicator. Like well, when your belly measurement goes down, yeah, usually that's yeah. a good thing. But I feel like you can't tell if the person's gained more muscle or not, or if their body symmetry is getting better, you know? It's just, for me, I prefer to look visually instead of like yeah, but I mean, looking at the measuring with a measuring tape is much better than measuring with a weight scale. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which is Weight scale is one of the worst ways to measure your progress. 99% of people do is they jump on a scale yeah. and they're like, oh, I gained two pounds. Yet when you look at it in the mirror, not only do they have more energy, don't they look yeah. more muscular, healthy, fit. They're like, oh, but I gained two pounds. Sinks and that's in. what they focus yeah, in on. I know. <clears throat> so. Yeah, so don't, you know, go solely by the, the weight scale. Don't go solely by your measurements, but your um, determination of progress should be your mm. overall, how do you feel? How do you look? Yes. You know, is your life improving? Yes. If fitness is making your life worse, then you're yeah. doing it wrong. You're doing it <laughs> yeah. wrong. That's a tweetable right Well, there. yeah, we'll just, and we'll end on that one right there, guys. <laughs> That's another show. That was a, another beauty of a of uh, Ask Living TV. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you guys for getting those questions Great in. Questions. And um, yeah, we got a lot more questions to answer. So the show is going to keep going. Yeah. Your question du jour. All right. Uh, we would like to know from you guys, if you had only one way to measure your progress, would you choose the weight scale, the body fat analyzer, or progress pictures? Tell us what you like the best. Or measuring tape. Or yeah, four, I guess four options, measuring tape. <laughs> or what your husband or wife says. I don't know about that. <laughs> Why not? You can't trust him. If, he, if he's trying to, <laughs> yeah, I guess from a, if he's trying to butter you up, he's going to tell you <laughs> you look good no matter what you actually yeah. look like. Damn, you look fine yeah, in those jeans. I don't jeans. believe anything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what do you want? What do you want? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Until next episode, keep watching. Thanks for watching. Keep it. Hey. Living lean. Living lean. Big shout out to all our Live Lean podcast listeners. We love you and would so appreciate it if you would give this podcast a review. We need your feedback to improve and grow. So please give us a review right now.